Hello everyone and welcome to my GDB video tutorial. GDB is just open source software that you can go and use to debug your programs. It's used by uh, professionals as well as beginning level programmers all over the world. And if you'd like more information about GDB, you can look in the description of this video. And with that being said, let's go ahead and begin the tutorial. So what I'm going to go and do in this tutorial is we're going to look specifically at segfaults and also uh, why we would need GDB. So first, I'm just going to go ahead and compile this program. And indeed, it did compile successfully. We didn't get any uh, errors. Or so, so we know it did compile successfully. And then we're just going to go ahead and run that executable. Now again, we're going to be looking at segfaults. So I'm going to enter 0. And basically, it's just going to call a function. So we type 0. And all we got was a segfault. We don't know where or uh, what line of code that was. All we did was type 0. It called a function. And that gave us a segfault. Let's go and run it again. And this time, we'll enter 2 for a different function. And also, that produced a segfault. So it's just telling us what so far. That's the only thing we've got when we just uh, compiled regularly without uh, any debugging tools. Now let's go ahead and compile, and we'll add the dash g flag on that test gdb.cpp. And now we'll just type gdb and then the name of the executable file. And you can see it gives us a little bit of information about gdb, and then also has this prompt at the bottom. So let's just go ahead and run regularly. And we'll type 0. And we see this time when it's segfaults, it actually gives us information in regards to that. So it does give us that it's segfaults. And then it also tells us the function, the name of the file, as well as the line number. And then it also outputs uh, what's at that particular line. So that's a lot more information that we got previously. Before, it just gave us a segfault. So we didn't even know which function uh, that was. We'll do that uh, for the other function as well, the second set fault. And we see similarly, it gives us information in regards to uh, how that set fault occurred. So we have what happened uh, as well as where. And that's actually pretty useful information, especially if you're uh, working on a large scale project. You don't want to just know uh, that you had a set fault. You also want to know where. So that way you can go ahead and debug it. And that's going to be a key essence in programming uh, throughout, uh, throughout your career. Or if you're just a hobbyist, anytime you're programming, debugging is going to be something you're just going to have to do. So now let's go ahead and rerun. And now what we're going to go ahead and do is uh, we're going to uh, introduce a new command uh, list. So let's go ahead and quit GDB real quick. I just want to clear the screen right now. And now we're still going to run GDB. And this time, we're going to go ahead and list what's actually occurring at that particular line 18. So I just typed L for list. And we see we have a few lines above and a few lines below. Now I'm going to introduce one more command, which is the breakpoint. So basically, I'm just inserting a uh, breakpoint, which will basically, whenever the programs run, when it gets to a particular line number or the name of a function, if that's what's specified, it'll go ahead and stop there. And we notice that the segfault was on line 18, so let's put a breakpoint there. And now when we run, we'll see at line 18 it does go ahead and stop. Now at this point, uh, depending on uh, uh, the function you're, uh, you're in, if you have a lot of variables, you can actually uh, type info locals. And that'll go ahead and print uh, all the local variables that you have. Or if you just want to uh, print a specific variable, you can just type P for print, or actually spell print out, and then the name of the variable. So basically, the key difference is if you know the names uh, of the variable, you can use P if you just want to uh, print that specific variable. Or if you just want to know what variables uh, you have within scope, you can do info locals. And that'll give you a little bit of information about all the local variables that you have. Now again, we did insert that breakpoint at line 18. So right now we know this PT is a null. And what's line 18 doing? It's actually dereferencing a null pointer. So that's a problem. So we're going to use the set variable command. And so we're going to set var PT equal to the address of value. 
And so it did go ahead and accept that. And now if we type N for the next line, we'll see that 18 did go ahead and execute and it's 10. So the value of PT is 10. And we see now we're at line 19. So we went ahead and successfully uh, uh, debug that particular function. Let's go ahead and work on the second one now. So we're just going to rerun. And now we're going to go ahead and execute that second one. And the next command we're going to introduce is the backtrace or BT. And basically it gives us a stack of all the recursive calls that are made or all the calls that were made to whatever function you had. So it's just calling the same segfault uh, function. And it looks like it's a recursive function because it's just calling that same function over and over again. And if you see, if we actually list that, we see that the return is x minus 1. So indeed, it was just uh, continuously calling that, uh, that function, that segfault2. So now that we know uh, what that particular function is doing, let's go ahead and rerun with a uh, conditional breakpoint. So first, let's set that predict uh, conditional breakpoint. And it's just b for breakpoint, or you can actually spell that out. And then this if and the condition. So if x is equal to 1, then we want to go ahead and break. So this is what we have now. So before we had a lot of recursive calls, but now when we rerun the program, and we call that function, we go ahead and have this breakpoint here. And now let's just go ahead and print that. And we see it did go ahead and stop when x is equal to 1. And that's exactly what we want. Again, let's just go ahead and list this. And we see basically I just commented out the, the uh, base case on this particular function. But we were able to go ahead and test within GDB to see what we would need to do to go ahead and correct this particular seg fault. So all we've done is actually worked in GDB. We didn't even touch the source code. We just tested uh, the different functions. And now we know exactly what we need to change. So we can just go to the source code. Uh, make those changes, recompile it, and we can be pr fairly confident that uh, we've successfully, uh, we have a much stronger program uh, than what we had previously. So I hope this uh, shows you uh, how important GDB is and how powerful it is. And thank you for watching.